Hello. Have we got a story for you? It's a story. It is definitely a story. This is our birth story for part our, two. Our baby boy Q. It was crazy. Yeah. All right. So uh, if you guys watched our first birth story, it was also an adventure. Mm -hmm. But this one was all types of unexpected craziness. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so this is our second baby. Mm -hmm. And right from the beginning, I've heard from my mommy friends. I've heard from our birth coach, Sarah LeVon, from our OG, OBGYN, Brie. OBGYN, yeah. OBGYN, that second babies can come very fast. So being pregnant, like the only thing, the only thing that was on my mind was just like, one, just get me to the hospital, and mm -hmm. two, Please, Lord, just let me have an epidural. Those were like my two top factors. You have always been team epidural. You yeah. were like, yo, as soon as I can get the epidural, give me that shit. Mm -hmm. You've never been like, uh, I, I want to experience <laughs> the feeling of childbirth. If that's you, cool. Mm -hmm. All the power to you. That is not me. I am no pain. All gain. No pain, all gain. I was thinking of that in my head. Um, I... I I didn't want to feel anything. Yeah. The week leading up to the birth, mm -hmm. you had already started dilating. Yes. She's already two centimeters dilated, guys. Last week I was two centimeters dilated and 80% effaced. So, which means what? Effaced is when, so you got the coochie hole and then you got your cervix hole and then for the baby to be ready, the like the the lining there's like a layer of fondant coochie flesh that needs to thin out and that is your coochie effacing your cervix effacement so that the, the baby is like ready to come out it uh, yeah that's perfect <laughs> I actually was gonna get a membrane sweep today but I'm not feeling well I'm that is when the OBGYN will go in and scrape out the frosting uh, well, not frosting. It's more like uh, your 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 coochie membrane stuff in there that separates the uh, fetus from the lining of your coochie inside room. Yeah, so I was gonna <laughs> have that done today. But when they do that, women usually go into labor that day, ish. Right. Okay. And because I'm sick, I don't want to go into labor. Oh, she's sick. Yeah, I'm sick. I don't want to go into labor, so we're not going to sweep the membrane. We're just going to just have a regular checkup, see if I dilated more. This morning, I did feel like a little bit of pressure everywhere in the vag, in the a-hole. My thighs were sore. So I text Sarah, our birth coach, and she's like, ooh, things are happening. And just just for the record, uh, we are, we're like 10 days ahead of our... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, due date. So. Yeah. Yes. So we are not overdue. We yeah, we're, not. we're a little ahead of the game. So we are. look at this belly. Goodness gracious. There's a butt right here that gets really hard sometimes. <laughs> Feet are over here. Head is somewhere down here. I don't think baby has dropped yet mm -hmm. because I still cannot breathe. <laughs> I have uh, zero comfort, all uncomfortableness. I'm not sleeping. The last stretch it's true when they say the pregnancy goes so fast until you get to like your last like month <laughs> especially the last like two weeks i'm like nah how you feel i'm like let, let this be over <laughs> well um so update on me i've been sleeping great um super just comfortable uh <laughs> <laughs> you're fucking pain <laughs> side side thing when I was two centimeters dilated, this was just, I, we found this out just after you got back from uh, the Usher concert. Yeah, yeah, so I went to watch Usher in Vegas because she gave, long story short, she gave me permission to go watch Usher in Vegas because I was like, I gotta see Usher. She was like, this is the only time because yeah. her parents are in town. So she was like, all right, do it now before we get too close to the due date. <laughs> to say if I had known that I was two <laughs> centimeters dilated before you left to go to Usher I would have been like you are not going <laughs> oh and I wouldn't have right because when you told me that 
when I got back, I was like, wait, what? Okay, so what do we, wait, what do we do? What, what, what happened? What, so, what? so what does that mean? Are you in labor? <laughs> um, so, yeah, you are so lucky that you went and saw Usher. Not luck, the universe. I okay. told you the universe was going to let me go watch Usher. Okay, the universe. <laughs> so the day that I actually delivered was March 21st mm -hmm. in the evening. In the morning of March 21st was when we went to see our doctor yeah and she does the check i'm still not having any sort of contractions and she's like oh you're about three to four centimeters and i was like holy shit in my mind like four is that's really close to five and five is half of ten so it's like i'm halfway ish done you know the dilating yeah and i still haven't felt like any sort of contractions right 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 so i'm like this is crazy <laughs> the last time we had a baby yeah you were four centimeters like we went to the hospital, you were moaning and groaning until you got to four centimeters. You yeah. were like, give me this epidural before you even got close to four centimeters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's facts. And this time you were chilling and you were at four. I was feeling nothing. <laughs> so that was the morning of the 21st. And later that day, I had family fly in. They had a long layover, so they were staying at my house for like 12 hours and I was a little bit like on edge of them like staying over at my house because I'm like oh maybe I'm not going to be able to see them like maybe I'm going to go into labor like I just like was having all of these thought all these thoughts so they came to our house they're chilling we had a nice little visit and then that night that night I drove them to the airport at like 7 p.m. yeah their flight was at like 11 yeah midnight yeah and you know I was like, y'all are good to leave at like nine, right? Yeah. Um, they're like, no, what? let's 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 be safe. Let's leave it like let's go early, early because they had an international flight. I'm like, all right, cool. I take them to the airport around seven ish. So I'm at home and I'm thinking to myself, like, please let nothing happen while you're gone for this like thirty minutes, right? <laughs> it just so happens that I started feeling around like seven ten p.m. I started feeling like a little contraction, like a, a little cramp, and I was like. Was that a contraction? Like, I'm not really sure. So I text my birth coach, Sarah, and I was like, girl, I think I'm starting to feel some things. She's like, she's like, what are, what are things? Define <laughs> things. I'm like, I think I felt like a little contraction. She's like, okay, let's start to uh, record them. So I downloaded, uh, record them, start to track them. Track them, sure, sure, sure. Whatever. Sure. So I downloaded a, a contraction app, and uh, I was having very... Uh, inconsistent contractions so that one was would be like three seconds long and then the next one would be like 13 minutes later so there was no real pattern to them so I'm sending Sarah these screenshots and she's like mm, they're still like a little bit all over the place like we need to wait until they're a little more closer together more consistent and then we can start making moves so I was like okay so I just continue to track them so now it's like getting closer to like 7 30 maybe 7 45 mm. p.m and you're still gone i think <laughs> yeah and i'm laying in bed and i had one contraction that i was like <laughs> i stopped for like a second mm. and i had to like close my eyes and kind of like breathe through it a little bit so i text sarah and we're texting this whole time like me and my birth coach Texted her and I was like, hey girl, I just had a contraction that I kind of like had to like stop in my tracks a little bit and breathe through. So as we are tracking these contractions, they are becoming more consistent. They're like five minutes apart. And in my head, I was like, I think it's time to go. Oh man. And I texted Sarah and I was like, just randomly, I was like, I feel like I need to poop. I feel like <laughs> I need to poop. She's like, okay, go to the toilet, sit on the toilet, but don't push. Okay go to the toilet sitting there and I'm not pushing nothing's coming out it didn't even pee I wiped and it was blood mm. so I take a picture of my toilet paper I send it to Sarah she's like okay we need to go Ooh. and I think you had just either had just gotten home like yeah. five minutes prior yeah or it maybe even five minutes later I don't know well, I walked in and I'm like ready to get comfortable just take my clothes off and change it to my PJs mm. and she's like we need to go. The time has come. <laughs> oh, 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 cool. Grab my dog. Oh, I'm like, oh, oh, really? Ricky, this is it. This is it. This is it. This is it. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
God, he had his hospital bag packed, and it was like packed super last minute. I've been ready to go for like weeks. Literally like, like a month. Like she's had weeks. all her shit ready. My luggage is like, I got like all of my things. My luggage is like zipped up right by the door. I'm ready to grab it and just leave. Yeah, so you know, I packed, I had my shit ready. You did, yeah, uh, you did. Uh, we grabbed the bags, we grabbed everything we needed to. My parents were sitting in the living room. Veda at this point was already in bed mm -hmm. and um, my parents were just like chilling watching TV. And I go into the living room and I was like, okay, you guys, it's time, it's yeah. time. So we turn around, like grab the keys and I just had to stop, I put my hands on our little like side table. I had to stop and go. <sighs> dad was like oh my god my dad was like in pain looking at me right. in pain because he was in canada for the last time we, you had a baby so. yeah and also just like i think seeing your children in pain is just like so sad yeah for sure so we're like making our way out the door mm -hmm. and i'm having another i walked like two steps and there was another contraction so like they're coming like very <laughs> frequently at this point yeah. so at the top of the stairs before we even like entered our car it's just <laughs> I was like I was like doing that <laughs> so we get to the car yeah yeah and you're like I'm gonna audio note Brie oh, and yes, I was like yes, no yes. let me do it because because he was driving yeah so I'm sitting in the passenger side at this point I started getting the shakes mm. and I remember having the shakes with Veda and that's when I was like uh, I don't I don't know the proper word like transitioning labor like yeah as it's like progressing and getting like more intense I started like getting these shakes and my yeah. my teeth started chattering yeah, so yeah, yeah. sending Brie this audio no we're like Brie okay so I don't really know what's going on so I'm like trying to like tell her what's happening my teeth are chattering all over the place and in her mind, she's probably like, oh shit, please just like make it to the hospital. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what she told us afterwards. After the fact. Yeah. yeah. She's like, oh shit, like we need to get to the hospital. But she's trying to keep it like, you know, calm cool. and cool for us on the way there. Honestly, like, so after the fact, Brie was like, yo, when you sent me that voice note, Brie was already like, I don't know. <laughs> she's like, if they make it to the hospital, that's like, uh, that would be great. <laughs> so... So thank God it happened at night because there was no traffic on the way to the hospital, right? We get to the hospital, cool. Um, I pull up, um, and mind you, this is different from the last time because it was COVID last time. So I didn't know what the protocol is this time. But we roll up to the little side entrance. I run up, I park, security guard lady. I'm like, do I, do I, are we about to have a baby? Uh, do, do we get like a wheelchair? She's like, yep, I'll grab a wheelchair. You grab this. I was like, okay, cool, 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 cool. Grab the wheelchair, wheel her in. I go find parking, then you go from there. Okay, so at this point, you're finding parking. Sarah, I think, is just like pulling up. I had to go into triage by myself, which I was used to because this is what we did with Veda before. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, they wheel me up and they need to physically check to make sure that you're actually in labor. Physically check as in hand up your cooch. Yeah, to like check to see if you're dilated. Yeah, yeah. So I'm laboring i'm like laboring like moaning and hands up on the wall and like there's people like waiting in the waiting room i did not care i was like starting to be like oh okay okay you need paperwork okay what's my insurance okay let, let me get my insurance and i'm like trying to like do this paperwork as i'm like laboring trying to write shit down give it to the people at the reception desk and i feel like they were just taking forever <laughs> i by this point it's probably like 8 30 yeah PM. And, and i've parked the car but they won't let me up until you officially get a room until i'm like actually admitted yeah because yeah. a lot of people will show up and they're not far enough dilated so they send them home yeah right yeah, yeah. so um I'm pacing back and forth at this point, like at the front desk, just waiting for a nurse and someone to like come and take me and check me and just admit me and let my people up because I'm like, okay, I need support by this point. So I'm just, I'm just pacing and I get to a point where I'm like, I don't mean to be rude and like, I'm sorry if I'm being loud, but like, I need a dog, I need my doctor and I need a room and I need an epidural. Like this is my second baby and like, I'm starting to feel like a little bit of pressure. And I was like starting to feel a little bit of pressure. How Canadian of you to be like, before I yell, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I don't know if this is rude, but. <laughs> this is just 
that's like not really me. <laughs> and um, they're like, we, yes, we know. We're just, you know, it's really busy. It's really full and this. I'm like, just please, whatever you're doing, just please, just do it faster. <laughs> so they finally like call somebody back. They're like, um, can we get so-and-so? Like this lady is really having a hard time. So finally somebody comes up, takes me to the back, puts me on the bed, takes all my clothes off, put on the little cape thing, the gown. <laughs> I'm trying to like lay down and focus, but like I'm laboring, I'm contracting, and I'm like, I need an epidural, I need, I need to talk to my doctor. And meanwhile, I'm trying to like text you, text yeah. Sarah, text Bree, and just <laughs> kind of keep everybody in the loop. But I'm like contracting and like suffering, not suffering, I wasn't suffering, but I was in pain. Yeah, meanwhile, I'm downstairs and the security guards are like, hey, hey, come here. You that dude from Wild and Out? <laughs> no, I'm and just down meanwhile, there. I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm downstairs, like taking selfies with people. <laughs> so I'm getting my IV. I'm getting a COVID test. I feel like everything was happening all at the same time, and I feel like I didn't feel the IV because I was having these contractions. I didn't feel the COVID test. It was just like whatever. Yeesh. When the nurse goes to check me, my and keep in mind my water has not broken by this point. Mm hmm. Completely different from the last time. Totally. So, when she goes in to check me, as soon as she put her hand inside mm -hmm. and felt around and took her hand out, all of this water came with her. Mm. And I was like, what was that? I'm like, did my water just break? <laughs> and she was like, she wasn't really answering me at this point. <laughs> yeah. Because I feel like she probably was like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, I think she was like, oh, oh. did I just, oh. Okie dokie. And, what did uh, she call it? It was she a... called it sudden rupture, sudden uh, something sudden membranes something. She was like, "Oh, it's just a shrimp. It's just a shrimp or whatever it was." I have it. I ha actually have it in my text message. Yeah. It, it was a yeah something. There was an abbreviation for it. Yeah, which, but basically means yes, the water broke. Yeah. Right. But she was like, "I'm like unexpected rupture membranes. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Like, it's just a, it's just a shrimp. It's just a shrimp." <laughs> Talking to another nurse. <laughs> Nurse says spontaneous rupture of membranes, but my words were literally like all like I don't even know if you can see this. Maybe we'll uh, we'll put a Just screenshot. Just one big on. word: spontaneous rupture, rupture of, of membrane. Shram. 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 And so, and Bree's like. Um, your water just broke now. Do you feel fluid leaking? And I'm like, yes. And she's like, okay, just hang in there because the contractions are about to get much stronger. Yee. And that was the last message that I had to breathe. And she's like, okay, Chia, so your water broke and um, basically the, the contractions are going to come uh, pretty intense now. So you just need to breathe. Like she was on her way. She wasn't on call that night. Yeah, yeah. But because she's our friend, like she wanted to deliver our baby. So um, she came like literally from home to meet us and deliver our baby. And luckily she lives close. So. Yeah, luckily she lives close. And that's when shit really, really progressed. So this is when I finally got to the room. I finally entered got to the room. right after the shrimp room. Yeah, the shrimp And I'm like, oh, what's happening? And that's when there's, oh, it's just, it was a little shrimp, it was a little shrimp. Little shrimp. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, what, what is that? Um, so finally, uh, you know, we, I, I grabbed the things and we're getting into our like actual delivery room. Sarah comes up and I'm like, Sarah, I'm like, thank God you're here. She's like, yeah. She's like, let's have a baby. She's so just like chill because this is her life. So Sarah comes in and Sarah is really just um, focusing on me and trying to get me to calm down. I just keep saying, excuse me, I need an epidural. I need an epidural. I need an epidural. Get into the delivery room. I'm on the bed. I'm contracting. Brie finally comes in and I was like, Brie, oh my, <laughs> thank God you're here. And she immediately was like, um, trying to get the anesthesiologist like in the room like now. Yes, because uh, we knew you wanted that epidural. That was your main thing. Yeah. Um, you know, what we kind of learned afterwards is that like everybody there Sarah included was like, there's a good chance you won't get this epidural because <laughs> it's, yeah. it's gonna come sooner than later, you yeah. know, the baby that is. I remember one specific contraction where it was so painful, but I was just like, my eyes were closed and I was just like listening to Sarah's voice and I was so, I'm like, you guys, I'm, I'm about to have a contraction and everybody was so silent and I was silent and my eyes were closed and I was just sitting there and I was like,
and I just like breathe, like just like quietly breathe through it, and yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, that was cool. <laughs> like it was crazy. <laughs> like everything, like time stopped. But it's like when they tell you to like lean into your contractions and like lean into your pain and think of it as like healthy pain and that your body is doing this for you it's not doing it's not doing this to you it's like helping you get your baby out when you start to like change your mental mm -hmm. then you're kind of like okay that's good for life too guys that's a good metaphor for life Yeah, a lot of labor is just, it's just mental. Yes, it's pain and yes, it hurt, but it's also like you need to think of it as like a different sort of feeling. So anyways, um, anesthesiologist comes into the room. So he's in there, she is going through it. She is feeling these contractions, right? Oh, anesthesiologist, oh. he has to do his customary shit, walk her through everything, you know, for whatever, you know, safe, uh, programs things he has to say for whatever he's like all right so i'm gonna have you go uh, you know sit up we're gonna do blah 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 you know just so you know it's blah 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 he's like getting his stuff ready and uh okay ma'am you uh, are you it's this and that okay just just so you know it's gonna go into your spine blah 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 he's getting ready do his whole spiel and all of a sudden she was like i need a push I need to push right now. <laughs> I was trying to get my legs on the side of the bed because if you've had an know before, if you've seen it happen, you're at the edge of the bed with your feet over the side and you're like kind of like cat positioned and you're like your back is kind of hunched, right? And you got to stay very still. And you know, and I remember somebody being like, you know, can you do this? I'm like, yeah, I, I can, I can stay still, I can stay still. And it was almost just like suddenly, I felt like my pelvis completely just like separated from each other Eek. and I just felt this like doo -doo, this oh. like doo -doo, doo -doo. it was kind of like that <laughs> it was kind of like that and I just I had this immediate urge to push wow so when I was like needing to push I was like okay I'm probably not gonna be getting an epidural by this point because I just felt I can't even explain to you and now I can understand why um, people vomit mm. shit yeah. and just every every hole that you have I feel like it's like a pipe just like waiting to burst Man. and things are just like coming out of everywhere because and I did poop and I knew the moment that she I She sure did. Poop. She was like, I'm gonna shit. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna shit. <laughs> it's just like everything in you is just like wanting to escape. And I felt this like doo doo, like this like heaviness. And I was like, I, I need, I don't know what's going on. Something's happening. Something's happening. I need to put Sarah. And I was like holding on to Sarah for like dear life. Meanwhile, Epidural guy is like, all right, well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember Bree saying um, uh, that while I'm getting the epidural, she was going to step out of the room, but there was no need for that because I was like, no, I need to push like right now. So something else that Bree told us is that um, when I had this urge to push, um, she, I needed to be checked to make sure that I was fully dilated because if you are pushing, prematurely you can rupture your cervix yeah so that's why they might tell you to hold off a bit even if you're feeling that urge right which means you're gonna be 10 centimeters in a second you still have some cervix here though chia so we can't push yet okay so you need your girl one second well, i'm worried that we're not gonna but the urge is like <laughs> it's like imagine having like a big poo just like right there oh girl i know the feeling and you know that you just have to <laughs> just give it a little like mm, and it'll just like come right out yeah yeah yeah, yeah. imagine being told is like to not do that oh i would i it, would yeah it was all bad I, I refuse to hold it in ever yeah I will always poo if I have to poo. Oh man. Yeah, so I remember then there was there was that moment where Brie was like, all right, Chia, so you're not gonna be able to have your epidural. Mm, mm. And, and she got like really serious yeah. um, for a second where she was like, uh, you know, baby's heart rate has been like down or it's, it was like going mm. down or something for like, you know, five to six minutes or whatever it was. And uh, basically saying, yeah, there's there's no time for an epidural, and 
I just, we just gotta. We gotta get this baby out. We just gotta do it. Do yeah. it the natural way. And then you're gonna like. Okay, you're like. Well, what does that mean? And then, and then Sarah's like. It means we're having a baby. Is that, is that what she said? Yeah. Oh my god, I don't remember. <laughs> so when I knew that I wasn't having my epidural, I grabbed Sarah in like total, <laughs> just fright. Yeah. I was so terrified that I had to do this. Yeah. And I remember grabbing her from like behind her triceps and almost like pulling her <laughs> forward. I was like, Sarah, I can't do this. I can't do this. And she's like, and we were like face to face. Yeah, it was hot. We were so close to each other. <laughs> Every time I was having a contraction, of course, like I was kind of tensing up my body and Sarah would always just be like, just relax. She's like, lower your shoulders. Yeah, Sarah's so good. You know, this is what she does. So it was like, she's really good at finding the right words and the right supportive things to say. I kind of had three things that I was kind of on repeat. You kind of run out of things, right? I, you know, I was keeping with the, you got this, babe, but uh, you just, hey, just, you just breathe, just breathe. <laughs> and Tim, by this point in my mind, had just like disappeared yeah, so, into the background. So, Annie, she, <laughs> no. so she always says, she's always like, when she tells the story, she's like, I don't know where Tim went. <laughs> Tim was like in the corner somewhere. I'm literally right next to Sarah. <laughs> Body's doing exactly what I'm like, so they're like this, right? I didn't see you. So, okay, hold on. Oh my god. So, so Chia, Chia and Sarah are here. She is grabbing Sarah. She's like, I can't do this. I can't do this. And Sarah's like, your body was made for this. You are going to be so good. You're strong. You're blah, blah, blah. You got this, right? And I like, I have no, I'm, and I'm, so I'm here next to them. And I, I have no idea what to no, say. No, you weren't. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was like, right? I was like, right here. I have no idea what to say. Because um, like Sarah's saying all this amazing shit. And I'm like, you got it, babe. <laughs> you got it. You, get, you got this. <laughs> My little cheerleader in the back. <laughs> hey. <Yeah, woo. laughs> By this point, Bree was asking everybody in the room to like break down the bed. I needed to get my legs back properly onto the bed because I was still in like you know what epidural position. Um, but I just had a hard time moving because I felt like I had this like boulder in between my legs and. Um, so we're trying to like, you know, shift me back to the bed, bring me low enough to the bed so that our doctor can literally deliver this baby and like catch it. Cause I was still like sitting way up on the bed that there was like, there was no way for her to like, you know, grab the baby. So I'm like pushing. And I think by this point they're like, okay, okay. Like one baby, but take a deep breath and bear down with everything that you have. And I, I did. And I was like, you're crowning. All I heard was like, you're crowning. Oh, good job, Chia! Oh, oh my God! Oh my God! I feel like you didn't, you didn't even need to bear down with all you had, cause like you just needed a little push, cause that head came out quick. It was like first push, boom, heads out. I was like, oh shit! And then it was like it was literally two pushes, second push. Uh, with everything that I had and it was like shoulders and then I, I felt I just felt everything just empty It's a boy it's a Oh my god and then after the baby it was just like I felt all of this just like fluid leave Yeah, me. so I'm over here holding the right leg <laughs> oh, sweet. I don't know if you know that. No, I didn't. I I'm holding one of your legs because Bree's like, here, Tim. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm holding. <laughs> Tim, Tim, do something. Yeah, I'm holding, I'm holding, I'm helping hold this leg. And then that second push, the body comes out. And man, it was like, you know, when you're, when you're, um, making like jungle juice for a party and you just throw everything into like the, it was like greens and reds and all type of gunk came out with the baby. I was like, oh, God. And there, and then Bree said, what is it? Oh, and then, oh, and then Bree was like, Tim. I was like, oh, it's a boy. <laughs> it's a boy. I knew it. Yeah. I freaking knew it. I've said this before, you know, 
Um, I was so convinced that I was gonna have nothing but girls and one day, probably like four or five months in, I was mm. talking to the tummy and I was like, all right, baby girl, can't wait to meet you. And I was like, this is not right. That's weird. That's weird. <laughs> That's, That's weird. That is a boy in there. Right. And now I don't know what to say. Hey, guy. Mm -hmm. Hey, little buddy. Little buddy. And uh, for sure enough, man, little yeah, boy little came boy. out. And then you cut the cord. Yeah, cut the cord. And I'll tell you this, man. Um... You know, when we had Veda, everything was like so just, it took a while to process. Because everyone says, oh yeah, you're for sure going to cry when, you're, when your baby is born. And it was so, it was just so crazy that we even had a baby. It, it took me a second to even really take it all in, right? So I didn't cry. I was more like in shock. Mm -hmm. With Q, though, I think because we had been through it once and because of how intense the whole thing was, mm -hmm. I was like, Emotional. I was like tearing up. It's okay. What you doing? Hmm? I was like, oh my god! Wow, this is oh wow, this is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I actually was teary. I was like, oh wow. Yeah, I don't. I, I didn't cry. I didn't cry for. I think it's just shock. I yeah. think the whole thing is just like holy shit. Because then suddenly there's just like this baby on your chest, and you're like, what? The F. <laughs> but I will say that after you push the baby out, mm. the pain is just gone. Like I felt fine. All of just like the, the contractions and just like the uncomfortableness, the shakes. My yeah. legs were a little bit cold. My legs were kind of shaky still. Yeah. Um, but it, everything, the, all, the pain is just like, it's just essentially just gone. I feel like probably after such like level 10 pain, everything under that is just like, meh. Yeah. Just so cozy on you. Are you okay, papa? You know? Yeah. So I did have a second degree tear. Um, and yeah, I did get the lidocaine to like numb the area while she was stitching me up. Mm -hmm and uh, baby was yeah on my chest and then it was crazy we actually have video too of just like baby being on my chest and then he's just like wiggling his little head and slowly like making his way to my boob yeah because and he found my nipple and just, immediately like, and started and just like latched oh. sucking away what a trip so smart which was crazy because you know veda i think i feel like it took a while to really latch mm. um but little q Immediately from yeah. the jump, he's ravenous. And with it. he's a hungry little guy. He's a hungry little guy, yeah, man. He's a hungry guy. And now we are parents of two. Now we are parents of two. And uh, it's, it's it's been an adventure. And I tell you what, one of my things that I was most worried about was um, Veda feeling like neglected or jealous mm -hmm. or feeling weird about the new baby. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, we spoke to a little specialist that told gave us a couple tips. Said like when you bring that baby home, don't make it a big deal for Veda. Don't be like, you know, ooh, like celebrate, like be real chill with it. Don't even pay attention to the baby, right? Mm -hmm. So we came in, we put the little car seat down. You meet like, you know, we haven't seen Veda in two or three days at this point. So we're like, hey mama, what's up? We're back. Give Veda a hug and kiss. Place, the, you know, talk to her for a little bit. Um, and then Veda kind of found her way to the car seat herself and was like, baby? <laughs> You have to cut your fingernails first, okay? He's, so small. He's too small. It's your brother. He's so perfect. Look. <laughs> 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 yeah? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Thank you, baby. Quest. <laughs> Hi, baby Quest. His name's Quest. 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 You call him Q if you want, okay? Hat. And what's that? Yeah, what's that? And then from the jump was like wanting to hold the baby so and kiss cute. it. So, so cute. cute. And she she'll go, say. she'll go, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. And we're go, oh, okay. We, we put the baby in her arms and she sits there and she goes, mm. she kisses it. And she like took to it so fast without any issues. <laughs> I was like, that shit blew my mind, man. It made me so just pleasantly surprised and relieved. Yeah. There were a couple, you know, little moments where she, you could tell that she was a little bit jealous. Um, but, yeah. But it was, it, no, it was, it was not what I was expecting. Like, well, from the beginning, like, maybe, like, the, like the first day or two, she did something I've never seen her do before. Mm -hmm. Like, when you were holding Veda, or when you were holding Q, 
um, she sat in between us and like grabbed your arm and grabbed my arm and like did this. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, she's never done that before. Yeah. And I think she's kind of like, come on, man. Yeah. You're mine. Yeah, these are mine. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, she's been like really cool with it and she's, she loves him. Yeah, she's been great. She's always like kissing him and wanting like, no, no. Nice hair. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers, hand, fingers, <laughs> nose, nose, eyes, ears, ears. Hmm. little ear, so cute. Yeah. So cute. Oh, okay. That was our birth experience number two, and I will say, <laughs> um, if I didn't feel uh, safe and supported and just reassured that everything that had happened was completely normal mm. i might actually be traumatized mm. like it it was scary a lot of the things that that happened are scary and it happens like really fast i mean i i can understand how that would be traumatized traumatizing for for compared to your first birth where you're like okay i have my epidural i'm chill mm -hmm. it like i feel nothing to go into it thinking i'm gonna do that again and then and then all of a sudden it's like, no, you're not going to do that. You're going to feel the most intense pain you've ever felt in your life in yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah. Oh, let me tell you this. Um, afterwards, like maybe like a few days later or a week later, we're talking about the birth. And she was like, yeah, you know, it's crazy. Um, like how quick it went. Were we there for like a like, couple hours or something? I'm like, babe, you push that baby out in 10 minutes. She's like, what? No. I was like, no, look, yeah. I got to the room at 9.30. It's, the baby was out true. by 10.30. She's it's like, what? True. No. It's I'm like, true. look at the, look at the text. She yeah. goes, no way. The timestamp, yeah, we, the, the timestamps literally. From the moment you dropped me off at the triage doors mm -hmm. to the moment that the baby was on my chest was like, it was like two full hours. Mm -hmm. But I felt like I was by myself in that triage room for like at least like six hours. <laughs> I'm like, I can't believe they left, they left me for that long by myself. <laughs> It was crazy. So um, thank you to um, our birth coach, Sarah, for being just uh, my lifesaver. Thank you to our birth coach, Dula Sarah. Thank you to uh, Obri GYN for always, you know, making Chia feel informed and safe. And, and, and um, birthing our babies. Mm -hmm. And like, how cool for you guys to be like such good friends and like do this together. Oh, that's great. I think I remember at one point, just like in between contractions, just looking up and seeing like Brie, you, Sarah, and I was like, oh, oh my, you guys are my people. <laughs> oh my, thank you guys for being here I or also, something. I also love being able to make really inappropriate jokes because it's Brie. So oh it's yeah, like... when she had to like stick her finger in my bum. <laughs> She had to do like a little like rectal exam. She's like, Chia, I'm just gonna you know, put this in your little rectum. And I was like, oh, or whatever. Yeah, so that was super uncomfortable for Chia. She's just like, ugh. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, Brie, me, me and Chia don't do that. So it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be this rougher. And I feel like because she just knows you so well, she just like rolls her eyes, you know? Rolls her eyes and, and laughs. laughs. Yes, of course. Because you're so funny. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so we would show you our baby, but he's sleeping. He's sleeping right now. I'll, I'll cut in some footage of it, of, the, of him. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hi. Hey. You good? <laughs> he's looking at me with such disdain. Mm hmm? Hmm? What is the problem? What the? Did you look me up and down? Hey, I'm gonna need you to relax, huh? Yeah, relax. Alright. <laughs> well, damn, guys. Um, thanks for watching another birth story. Um, if, of course, if you want to see more uh, baby content, there's always the vlog channel. Mm -hmm. uh, YouTube.com slash Tim and Chia. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. I guess that's it. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Go by my love life. I was in love, uh. But you made me fall in love twice. How you got my whole face, but you got your mama's attitude. Terrible tools, but I can never be mad at you. Gratitude. Every time I hear you laughing, boo. Never been a clingy dude, but I'm so attached to you. I used to be all in the club, like where the ladies at.